Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, a quick note before we jump into our study today. I received an email from John MacArthur's Ministries informing me that I needed to take down the videos that I had uploaded on the Strange Fire Conference. And the reason for that is that I can edit those once they're on my computer and I can make them say anything they want. So what they've allowed me to do is to directly link to their website and we can watch those videos. So if you'll go to our ministry's website, Hayekadosh Ministries on YouTube.com, from there you'll find the playlist titled Strange Fire, and you'll find 22 videos that have been placed upon that playlist that you can click on and you can watch them at your own leisure and in any order that you so choose to do. But again, I strongly encourage that you watch these videos because as Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 tells us, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so many are being misled because they do not fully understand what is going on, if this is an attack and where it may be coming from. And so again, just simply go to our website, click on the playlist titled Strange Fire, and you'll find all the videos within that playlist. Well, with that being said, today is January the 23rd in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, we're continuing our journey through the story of the Bible, and today we're going to pick up in chapter 40, verse 1. And so if you have your Bible, turn to Genesis chapter 40, and let's pick up together in verse 1. Now, we are told it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. Now, remember, Joseph has been placed in prison. He was sold by his brothers into slavery. Those slave owners sold him to Potiphar, who is an official in the kingdom of Pharaoh. Potiphar's wife accuses Joseph of rape. As an innocent man, he's cast into prison. While he's in prison, he's made a trustee. And while he is in prison, he meets the baker and the butler of the king of Egypt, of Pharaoh himself. And Pharaoh, in verse 2, was angry with the two of his officers, the butler and the baker. And so he put them in prison where Joseph himself was bound, where Joseph was a trustee. And so because Joseph was a trustee, he served the, the butler and the baker. He tended to their needs. Now in verse 5, it tells us they dreamed a dream, both of them, and each man had his dream in one night. Well, when Joseph came to them to tend to them the next morning, he noticed that their countenance had fallen. And so he asked them, why did they look so sad? And they said unto him in verse 8, we've dreamed a dream and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said, do not interpretations belong to Yahweh, to the Almighty, to the creator of men who is the creator of dreams? Tell me them. And I will go to God on your behalf and get your interpretation. And so the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and he said to him, In my dream there was a vine before me, and in the vine were three branches. And as it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes, I noticed that Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. And I took the grapes, and I pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of your dream. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head. He will restore you into your rightful place, for you are an innocent man. And you will continue to serve Pharaoh throughout all his days. But please remember me when you return unto Pharaoh. Because I have interpreted this dream to you, I've shown you this kindness, I told you of what is to come, please make mention of me unto Pharaoh, so that I can leave this prison and once again serve in Pharaoh's courts. 
for I have been dealt an unfair lot in verse 15. I was stolen away from my family. And here too have I done nothing wrong that they should put me into this dungeon. And when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, that it favored the butler, he also said to Joseph, in my dream, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket, there was of all manner of bakements for Pharaoh. And the birds did eat from them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are again three days. Within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head from off of thee, and he shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat the flesh from off of thee. And so in verse 20, it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, interestingly enough, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he did as Joseph has said, as God had interpreted the dream. He lifted up the head of the chief butler, and restored the chief butler unto his normal duties. But he hanged the chief baker, in verse 22, as Joseph had so said. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Now there's two ways that we can look at this here. The first way we can look at this is from God's point of view. We can look at this from the way that God sees things. And God has blocked the memory of Joseph from the butler's mind, because he has a plan for the life of Joseph. And in order for that plan to be fulfilled, Joseph must remain where he is. Now we can also look at this from the butler's point of view in that the butler has been placed back into his normal position. He feels the stresses of life in returning to his normal duties. And he becomes so caught up in his life and his duties that it simply slips his mind. In other words, he becomes so focused upon him in his own life that he forgets Joseph, who had served him and brought him hope in his time of need. And we as God's people can learn from both of these viewpoints that we need to patiently endure through our trials, through our sufferings, knowing and realizing that God has an ultimate plan for us. And that's why we're told in James chapter 1, beginning at verse 2, count it all joy when you fall into different kinds of divinely sent trials, knowing that the trying of your faith will work patience. It will work endurance. But let that patience let that endurance have her perfect, complete work. Don't be anxious. Don't try to hurry things. Simply wait on God to do his perfect work in you through that trial. And from the second viewpoint, we can learn that we need to be very careful not to be so caught up in our own lives, in ourselves, that we forget those who desperately need us. This may be in the form of fellowship. It may be in the form of comforting them through sorrow. It may be in the form of helping them in a time of need. It may be in the form of rebuking them when they are going astray. Or it may be in the form of praying for them when they are afar off. But let us be warned to be very careful not to become so preoccupied with ourselves, with our own lives, that we forget others. Because we may be the only one that God is using to help them in their time of need. Even through prayer, we may be the only one praying for them. And that's why it's so important that we continue to do so. Well, we're going to close there today, friends. And again, I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful that you are here with us today, that you are feasting upon the word of God and savoring all of its truths. And I pray that by doing so, you are becoming a closer follower of the Lord Jesus, more dedicated, more committed, more determined each and every step of the way in your journey. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you most of all for your faithfulness to the Lord Jesus. 
Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.